So in case you have not read the book already, is that uh, for the purposes of this, the equivalent of the United Federation of Planets is called the Universal Union. Uh, the name of this piece is called To Soothe the World, and I will begin. Please state your name and occupation. I am Brandon Smith. I'm a partner in the law firm of Koenig, Nichols, and Montalban. I specialize in employment and workplace law. And what is it that you are planning to do? I am filing a class action suit against the space fleet of the Universal Union on behalf of the crews of its ships. Specifically, I am alleging that the Universal Union not only allows gross and egregious violations of basic workplace safety laws and regulations, it actually encourages them. <laughs> Leading to the deaths, and possibly even worse, the almost horribly creative injuries of its junior officers. <laughs> These are bold allegations, sir. Are they? <laughs> Let me ask you, sir. Do you know how often a junior officer or crew member is maimed and or killed in the service of the Universal Union? Two times a day? Three? Five? Every seven seconds. <laughs> Every seven seconds. Yes, every seven seconds. Now think about that. Right now, while we are speaking, some crew member of some Universal Union spaceship is being chewed on by a space badger. <laughs> now one is sneezing herself into a coma. <laughs> now one is falling down an open shaft on an engineering deck into the antimatter engines. <laughs> it's troubling. It's a festival of death. <laughs> Now one is having its brain sucked out by the evil robots of Antero 7. What does a robot need with a human brain, I ask you? And who is the idiot who programmed the robots to be evil? <laughs> as horrible as these things are, it can be argued that life in the space fleet is inherently da dangerous. The space fleet works in space. It goes to strange new worlds and such. All the more reason for basic workplace safety, don't you think? Let's take those strange new worlds you speak of. The space fleet logs an away team visit to a new Class C planet once a day. Once a day. And to land on that strange new world, what sort of specialized protective protocol does an away team member undergo? None. He heads down, wearing a protective layer of breathable polycotton blends. <laughs> it would be as if, to land on the moon, Neil Armstrong wore a polo shirt and khakis. <laughs> to be fair, the moon is an airless world, and Neil Armstrong would have had his lungs sucked out through his trachea. Yes, yes, and when I visit Ecuador, I go and get a shot so I don't get infected by a malaria-carrying mosquito. My point is that Space Fleet takes fewer precautions to visit an entire new planet filled with unknown microbes and parasitic flatworms than I take when I go on a parasailing vacation. <laughs> and you, you don't actually need to leave the ship to be in danger. Huh? <laughs> Do you know what is the second leading cause of serious burns on a Universal Union Space Fleet ship? I do not. Exploding instrument panels. <laughs> Ship hit by a hostile missile? Instrument panel explodes. Rough ride through a proton nebula? Instrument panel explodes. Trying to make tea in a Universal Union Space Fleet microwave? Instrument panel explodes! When was the last time your microwave at home exploded in a shower of sparks? Do you fear, do any of you fear losing a finger when you make popcorn with it? No, of course not, because at home, someone designed your microwave not to randomly erupt into shrapnel. <laughs> I understand that building a spaceship is expensive, but even the lowest bidder should be able to afford fuses. <laughs> Out of curiosity, what's the number one cause of serious burns on a Universal Union space? Uh, fleet ship? Uh, that's the Space Fleet's annual amateur Hawaiian fire dancing competition. <laughs> that is entirely opt-in and voluntary. We are not suing over that. <laughs> Got it. We also have troubling accounts of labor law violation within the Space Fleet. There's one ship 
I won't mention which one until the suit is formally filed, where we have credible reports that the captain is allowing a child barely post-pubescent to be part of his bridge crew. being violated there. You're violating almost every single child labor law on the books, of course. But beyond that, what sort of idiot trusts a 13-year-old with a multi-billion dollar spaceship? That kid can't even get a learner's permit to drive a car. Of course, while the kid is careening through the galaxy, side-swiping asteroids or whatever, every other member of the crew is at his mercy. These could be the actions of a rogue, insane starship commander. <laughs> My point is that it is not. Time after time, ship after ship, we are seeing a distinct pattern of neglect of simple, basic workplace safety. Seatbelts! <laughs> Invented in the 19th century! You won't find a single one anywhere in space fleet. And they tell you, well, since we invented the internal restraint force field, we don't need those anywhere. But you know what? When your spaceship hits a dwarf planet because a distractive 13-year-old is piloting, <laughs> and then his instrument panel explodes causing a failure of the internal restraint force field, you're gonna wish you had a friggin' seatbelt. <laughs> it's a compelling argument. That is what we are going to tell the judge, yes. <laughs> what will you be suing for? We want nothing more than a just and adequate sum for the pain and suffering of these long endangered crew members and the care of their unfortunate widowed spouses and orphans. Then how much would that be? 37 quadrillion dollars. <laughs> it seems like a lot. It is no more than what is fair. I feel compelled to note that the entire Universal Union gross domestic product is only 1.4 quadrillion dollars. I'm afraid I don't see your point. My point <laughs> is that you are asking for 26 times the worth of an entire galactic culture in compensation for exploding instrument panels. Oh, it's not just the exploding instrument panels. Let's not forget about the evil robots. Even, <laughs> even with the evil robots, it seems like a lot. Well, it's an opening note. Uh, what we're hoping is that it will get the Universal Union's attention and that it will settle out of court for a reasonable alternative. If 37 quadrillion is your definition of fair, what is your definition of reasonable alternative? We'd like a planet. <laughs> <laughs> a planet? Yes. A whole planet? Yes, a whole planet where the shell-shocked victims of the Universal Union's campaign of neglect and abuse and their families can spend the remaining years in comfort in quiet bucolic surroundings. And you need a whole planet for that. It's a very large class action suit. <laughs> and of course the firm will need its 40% for representation, which in this case will come to a couple of continents. What will a law firm do with two continents? Storage. <laughs> <laughs> this implies you have a have selected a planet you wish to have. Uh, yes, we do. It is a planet called Cygnus 17. That sounds vaguely familiar. Yes, well, it was recently in the news. Wait! Cygnus 17, aka the death planet of hell. <laughs> we take issue with the nickname. <laughs> but yes. The planet where 30,000 colonists were recently consumed alive by ravenous man-sized bats. Yes, but those bats all got sick and died from eating humans, so they're not a problem anymore. <laughs> but there's still the issue of the constant earthquakes. Yes. And the lava flows. Yes. And the moon in an unstable orbit spiraling down toward the planet and cracking as it does so, dropping city-sized meteorites onto the planet's surface. And, 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 and well, the fact no, that, that scientists estimate that the star it is orbiting is likely to go supernova at any time, blade, bathing the planet in flesh, searing gamma rays before the exploding surface of the star vaporizes everything in the inner solar system. Listen, we're not 
saying it's not a fixer-upper. <laughs> we are willing to stipulate that. But fixing it up will be exactly the sort of constructive rehabilitative work that will help the shell-shocked crew members abused by the Universal Union to get back on their feet and live happy, productive lives. It seems like a lot of work. No, they won't have to do it alone. We've recently gotten a very good deal on some obsolete but still useful robots <laughs> to assist and support our clients as they start their new world. Let me guess. You got them from Antares 7. Yes, we did. <laughs> there is a switch on the back that turns them from brain-harvesting cyborg killers to helpful and compliant android servants. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong with this plan. <laughs> Simply nothing at all. Brandon Smith, good luck to you and your suit. Thank you, sir.